All right, what's up? This is the Button Brenneman Show. We are winding down the season. He's Brenneman. I'm Butt. And this is the week of the game. The greatest rivalry in all sports. So, Adam, pull up a chair, bro. Get out Let's your go. notepad. Rumor has it Penn State doesn't have any protected rivalries next year. I got right year. here. Yeah. Rumor <laughs> has it Penn State has no rivalries. I mean, what are we doing? What are we doing? So, you represent one end of the spectrum. Uh-huh. No rivalries. My guys represent the other end of the spectrum. Uh, the other end of the spectrum, the rivalry, the game. What do you know about the game? What do you know about the history of the rivalry? Uh, I don't know much about the history. Uh, and I would love to to be in like the Jake Butt history class right now. So can you, can you give me some history? I know you're a big history guy, you know, like what I, give me, give me some, what do I need to know? Cause at, yeah. at Penn state, we don't, you know, our rivals like Michigan state and Maryland. I don't know. Like we don't have a real rival. You know, you ever been to Toledo, Ohio? Um, I, I did, I called a game at Toledo yeah. last year. Yeah. Fine city, right? Great city. Yeah. What if I told you that there was a literal war between the state of Ohio and the state of Michigan back in the 1800s over the rights to Toledo? Really? Yeah. That's that, how deep, that's how deep this thing goes. And that was the birthplace of the game. Part of it. Part <laughs> of it. Yeah. Well, and here's the funny thing about Toledo. It's a, it's a Ohio city. But there's a large Michigan base there. Like that's that's where you start to really? kind of trickle into yeah. the Michigan fandom is Toledo. And uh Chris Wormley, one of my good buddies, there's a bunch of bunch of guys from Toledo that made their way up up north to uh Michigan. But look, this is it's a hundred plus years, a century plus of history for both schools as individuals, a hundred plus years of history. You got the 10 year war between Woody and Bo, you got yeah. Jim Tressel. You got Lloyd Carr, Urban Meyer, Jim Harbaugh, Ryan Day. I mean, you got some, there's a bu- and a bunch yeah. in between legendary players at both levels. And it seems like it's coming to a head this year. I mean, we could go to a hundred years of history <laughs> and for everything going on this year, right? First off, undefeated. Both teams handled their business. They did their part. Undefeated. Chance to chance for a trip to Indy potential last chance to make your case to go to the playoffs. I mean, there's a lot of teams knocking on the door that think they deserve a shot. The winner probably gets in. The loser might need a little bit of help. You got two great running backs. For for the first time in a long time, Michigan say they probably have the edge at the quarterback position. Defenses. Jim Knowles stepped up all the questions this offseason. Jim, can you stop the explosives? He's done it. He's done it. And this feels like two teams that are kind of hitting their stride this year. I just want to ask you, as someone that's just an analyst, a fan of football, that's maybe not emotionally tied to the rivalry, what are you most excited about seeing this weekend? Man, there's there's so many things. I've been thinking about this game the last couple of days. The cool part, you just talked about the rivalry. There's so many rivalries in college football where – uh, you know, again, talked about Penn State. Penn State has a couple, like the Penn State Michigan, Penn State Ohio State rivalry, or uh, there's other ones in college football where you know the teams have respect for each other. A lot of the players know each other. Um, there's not a whole lot of respect between <laughs> between these two programs, and there there is a lot of a lot of uh, not bad blood, but just there's a lot of a lot of controversy right now. A lot of um, you know, a lot of for both programs, there's a lot on the line and this is a big game and both programs have been at for Ryan day. He is judged and has been judged the last couple of years for not being able to beat Jim Harbaugh. Uh, and at this point now with coach Moore as the interim head coach, uh, there's a lot on the line and Ryan day can't afford to lose this game to an interim head coach. And then think of thinking about a guy like coach Moore, talk about propelling your career forward. If you go head to head with Ryan day, in the biggest game, one of the biggest games we've had in the last decade of college football. I mean, this is what, this is why you love college football. This game, let's, let's just appreciate that we get this game Two undefeated teams last game of the regulars. I mean, it it doesn't get any bigger. It doesn't get any better. And the stakes don't get any higher. It's a, it's a win and make the playoff lose. Don't make the playoff game. It's a two quarterbacks that are trying to build their legacy and their case for, for cementing, uh, their historic place in their program's history uh, for for uh, McCord at Ohio State and McCarthy at Michigan. There's two defenses that pride themselves on being one of the best in the country. There, there's so much at stake in this game. It, it's gonna. I just want to appreciate that we get a chance to to watch it on 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 Saturday. The hair on the back of my neck is standing <laughs> up. 
I mean, exact. You're exactly right. What more do you want? Yeah. This is what it is. Yeah. Get a nice get, get your heat up. Hopefully, you guys have an awesome Thanksgiving, an awesome weekend, and then Saturday morning you maybe recharge the uh, the food reserves, crack open your favorite beverage. The good thing is about this game, it's a noon kickoff. So yeah. you could have your coffee or whatever you want to do that morning. And you, you don't have to wait long. It is the best game, man. It, it, it's, <laughs> oh man, I cannot wait. I, I, and, and I must, I must correct you though. I must maybe not correct you, but steer you because I think it really, it's more than meets the eye. There is a lot more respect than initially meets the eye. And I, I hear the pressers this, this, this week. I, I get it. Cause it's not like it's all respect, but there yeah. is, the, I think that's what makes this great though, is like, there is more respect than initially meets the eye. Like some of my, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, man. A lot of my best friends went and played at Ohio state even. Um, and, and it was always mutual respect. It was like a, a fam, a, a brotherly respect where it's like, I want to yeah. kick your butt, but I still respect you at the end of the day. So you mentioned something though, you know, for Sharon Moore. And here's, here's one thing I'm curious about because this has kind of showed up. What like what is a head coach? Well, a head coach is like less about, you know, X's and O's. Like Jim Harbaugh doesn't call the plays, but he has like influence on that. He yeah. makes the key decisions. Do you go for it on this fourth down? If you do, is it a run? Is it pass? Is it a trick play? Is it a fake punt? Um, you know, what what are the in-game decisions that get made? Jim has a long list of experience in those situations and maybe leans more towards being aggressive at least what we've seen recently than Sharon Moore. And maybe that's because Jim has less to lose. Like he knows yeah. who he is as a coach, whereas Sharon Moore has the pressure to say, oh, wow, all of a sudden I have the keys to the program. And the thought is I don't want to mess this one up. You know, those are two yeah. different philosophies. I wonder, and let me get your thoughts on this. How does Sharon Moore deal with that psychological dance uh, in a big game this weekend? I, I've been thinking about it and all that Sharon Moore has on his plate right now. I mean, the guy's calling the plays. He's dealing with when to call the timeouts. He's dealing with, uh, he's dealing with, um, you know, all the the situational things with fourth down, as you just mentioned. And the difference is, a lot of head coaches that call plays, they have a system in place for how they're going to handle timeouts and fourth down, and they have people around them. And I know Bill O'Brien at Penn State had, you know, someone in the box helping him with the timeouts, all that kind of stuff. For Sharon Moore, he's never dealt with this before. He he has the last couple games, obviously, as the as the intern. But you know, to be to have to handle all this, it's a lot. And I know for sure that Coach Moore in Michigan will have a plan going in. Hey, we're gonna probably go for it on the first fourth down, or hey, we're gonna we're gonna run a fake punt at this point, or you know, we're we're some kind of strategy. But what will happen at some point is that Sharon Moore is gonna have to make a gut decision with about five seconds to think about it. Uh, it's going to happen fast. It's going to be a big play in the game. He's going to have to make a decision without talking to anybody else, without hearing a bunch of things in the headset of, do we go for it on fourth down and four to end the game, or do we punt it and put our defense back on the field? Do we kick a field goal here, or do we go for it on fourth and two? You know, there's so many things that he's going to have to make a decision on. And I think in this kind of moment, I want to see Strom more lean on the aggressive side and, and trusting his players and go winning the game. Go win that thing. You know, you have – all the outside noise you have an opportunity as a head as a interim head coach to make a name for yourself and beat Ryan day, go be aggressive and try to win the game. And if you have a chance to end it with a fourth down and three, go for it on fourth down and three, don't punt the football. You know, I, I think that's what he'll lean into in this kind of setting. And then for Ryan day, it's the opposite. It's trying to think about, you know, if I think about pressure, I think of the pressure being on Ryan day, like Ryan day has to win this game at, at, at Ohio state. You got to beat, uh, you got to beat a, a team without their head coach. You got to, you know, after what's happened last couple of years, make us make a stand and, and win this kind of game. So, you know, how does he, how does Ryan day balance that? Is he more aggressive because he has to win the game or is he more conservative uh, trusting his defense that's been playing really, really well. So there's a lot that goes into it. I, I just keep coming back to how impressed I've been with Strom Moore one over the last couple of weeks and two, the, the amount of things that are going to be going through his head, during those three and a half hours on Saturday and all he has to handle. And at some point there's going to be a crucial decision he has to make. And I'm excited to see which way he goes with it. Kind of makes the emotion we saw post uh, post game at Penn state a little bit un more understandable, dude, because no like you can't even, no one can understand what that's like, where it's like, yeah. Hey, do you go for it on fourth down? Usually coach Harbaugh would be saying, Hey, we're going to go for it on fourth here. Get your best play. 
But yeah. Sharon as the play caller, he now has to say, should I go for it? Do I have make to play? that decision and then say, <laughs> do I have to play? And then say, yeah. what is that play? Yeah. Like, you know, like it's, yeah. um, and then for everything going on, man, it's a magnifying glass. Like this game already is a magnifying glass. It's under a microscope, but all the in-game decisions are looked at. Like, I mean, dude, 20 million people are going to watch this game. Yeah, <laughs> Everyone's going to talk about every decision yeah. and not that that matters, but it kind of does. It's real, but it's kind of not real. Like it's both. Um, how about we go in game and we talk about some matchups and I'll give you a couple that I'm keeping my eyes on. Uh, and as we get into it, Will Johnson, Marvin Harrison, Jr. No doubt. Can't yeah. wait. Do they, do they, do they have him follow across the field? How about Trey yeah. Henderson versus Blake Corm? Yeah. Healthy, healthy going into this game. That's interesting. Interior of Michigan's O line. Zach Zinner, Trevor yeah. Keegan, probably the heart of their of offensive line versus Ty Hamilton, Ty Leak Williams, Michael Hall Jr. That's a big time matchup. Ohio State's offensive line has been a been a bit of a shaky uh, unit throughout the year. At times, better than other times, and, and they're playing an excellent defensive front from Michigan. I yeah. could go down the list. Yeah. Um, Michigan's I, I, tight ends versus Ohio State safeties. What are some of the matchups that stand yeah. out? To you? I mean, there, there, there's a there's a few things that that I keep thinking about. One is for Ohio State, who does step up behind Marvin Harrison Jr.? They're going to need someone else to make some plays. And is it, you know, does Cade Stover step up and have a huge game? How's a book of play? Like, they're going to need one of these guys to to make some big-time plays and big moments, especially if a guy like Will Johnson is traveling around and 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 playing uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, man-to-man -man across the field. I, someone else is going to have to step up. Who's that going to be? I, I The other part with Ohio State is, and Trayvon Henderson adds such a different dynamic to this offense. Uh, it, it takes the pressure off the offensive line. And most importantly, he takes pressure off Kyle McCord and allows Kyle McCord to, to not have to do too much and to play within the system because he has an elite running back that can change the game. Uh, you know, and the, the thing I keep thinking about, Jake, from like a momentum and outside noise standpoint, it's been funny to see. Remember just a few weeks ago how – all the confidence in the world in college football was in Michigan and, and everyone doubted Ohio state and Ohio state's not very good. This is the year Penn state's going to beat them. They don't have the depth. They don't have the quarterback. And I mean, that was allowed. We were on this podcast talking about is Ohio state for real. Are they going to, you know, are they going to lose one of these games? Uh, they didn't look good against Maryland and how so quickly that has flipped. And now all the confidence is in Ohio state and everyone's talking about, College football playoff committee had Ohio State number one. You know, like they're number one in the country. I mean, everyone in the in the country has confidence in Ohio State, and it's all slipping in Michigan. It just yeah. feels like the perfect opportunity for the Michigan program, knowing how they're built, knowing the culture, hearing it from you. To it feels like a moment where they're going to come out and and prove a lot of people wrong and shock the world, especially without having their head coach. That all the all the uh, how that brings everyone together. And it's kind of the us against the world mentality. I thought Harbaugh's comment about, you know, we're now America's team. He got, got a lot of, got a lot of, you know, funny comments, people making fun of him, but like, you know what he's trying to do there. He's trying yeah. to build that us against the world mentality. No one believes in us. Everyone loves Ohio state playoff committee has them number one. They're ranked ahead of us. Uh, and no one's talking about Michigan because we lost their, their head coach is suspended. It's like, this is the perfect time for Michigan to flip that script and that narrative. It just feels like it's all boiling up at this moment. Yeah, man. It's uh, you know, the America's team comment, like I'm not going to try to explain it, but I, because I get it, there's there, most people will be like, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> but, but really if, if he believes that, and if Michigan believes that, then who cares what any, like that's yeah. dude, if Kirby smart in the off season is saying we're the underdogs and we're all sitting here like coach, yeah. uh, back to back national champions. <laughs> no, you're not the underdogs, <laughs> but if they, if they're the underdog, if they are yeah. the under, it doesn't matter what anyone says. Like that's the, that's the mind game. Let me tell you one matchup that I'm going to think about here because we talked about Ryan day as we put a bow on this. He has really stepped his game up in terms of play calling. I think about the Penn State game. Yeah. And it's not just like, hey, we have to throw the ball to Marvin Harrison Jr. It's how do we put him in position so he's open, so McCord feels yeah. comfortable throwing. And that means lining him up all over the field. So, okay, so then what I say is Michigan does a good job of disguising coverages. They they really they, – they made it tough on Drew Aller at times. I mean, he was just throwing the ball into green grass because he was confused by the looks. There's yeah. going to be a couple plays in this game where Ryan Day has Marvin Harrison Jr. really well schemed up. 
And then yeah. Michigan's going to send a coverage, a simulated pressure, and drop someone underneath a route that McCord will not have seen in practice. Does he throw it or does he have the discipline to throw it away? If he does throw it, can Michigan intercept the ball and capitalize on it? Yeah. There will be a play in this game that sends ripples, gravitational waves through space and time, just like the Donovan Edwards run down the right sideline last yeah. year. And that that play, whoever whoever gets the momentum and the benefit of that play could decide this game. So real yeah. quick, should we do some predictions? It, it's a uh, – yeah, let's do it. Go you, for it. You, okay. You uh, know who I, I'm going with, right? Yeah, I know. And I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I think Michigan wins this game. I got, I got Michigan. I got Michigan 24-21. This is dangerous because we both picked Penn State earlier in the year. Now you got me a little bit nervous. I, I do. I, I like that. I think it's – I actually – I think you might be spot on. I might say uh, 23-19 Michigan. It's going to be a really close – the defensive battle this year for sure. No doubt. And to echo what you just said about the – like one of the key things I keep thinking about this game is looking back at the game the last couple of years, Michigan's defense is going to give up yards and plays to Ohio State. There's no doubt. But at some point in this game in the fourth quarter – I really believe that the Michigan defense will come up with a massive, massive stop or a massive turnover. I just they have to. I, they have to. If they're going to win this game, it'll be fourth quarter, maybe at, at, late in the third quarter. The Michigan defense, like you just said, will have to make one of those big plays, simulated pressure, drop someone out, pick the ball off. That, that's what I see happening, and that's what turns the game in Michigan's direction. I will say this. Jim Knowles defense is going to have more stops this year than they did last year. They're no a much doubt. improved unit. So um, thanks so much, man. He's Brenneman. I'm Butt. This is the Button Brenneman Show, man, and we will see you next week to preview the Big Ten Championship and review the slate of games this weekend. Thanks so much, bro. Thanks, man.